Welcome again on behalf of World Monuments Fund and the Getty Conservation Institute uh, and other colleagues who've worked together on the ARCHES system that we're going to be presenting this morning. Um, I'm Bonnie Burnham, the president of the World Monuments Fund. And as many of you know, uh, World Monuments Fund is primarily a field organization, nonprofit organization that works around the world uh, on a site-specific basis to preserve uh, cultural heritage. Uh, after the crisis and the war in Iraq in 2003, WMF, uh, like other organizations working in this field internationally, wanted to find a way to make a meaningful uh, contribution to Iraq and uh, try to address some of the catastrophic events that had happened there in the course of the war. And in conversation with my colleague, Tim Whalen, of course, we learned that the Getty was also considering uh, what kind of options there were to be of assistance. And we decided uh, that we would work together in a coordinated fashion. Uh, ultimately, uh, the uh, Department of State joined our efforts and uh, supported them. But that initial collaboration between WMF and GCI uh, was the place where the idea of um, this database system came, came about. At the time, there was not much access to the ground in Iraq. It was, uh, the circumstances were uh, very turbulent. And furthermore, uh, the people who were responsible for cultural heritage in the country uh, were trying to piece together uh, a, a national structure for heritage management. Uh, where there had virtually uh, not been anything in place and where people had not been trained in conservation over uh, the years uh, of, uh, near Saddam Hussein. And so we ultimately decided that our, the best thing that we could do to help Iraq in that uh, particular moment was to provide training and to provide uh, tools and resources. And we began developing the uh, first version of the database that we'll, we'll be presenting today, which was called MEGA for Middle Eastern Ge Geo Database for Antiquities. What happened then was that the uh, Jordanians, uh, who had been hosting uh, many of our meetings and uh, training sessions with the Iraqis, said that they would really like to have an opportunity to use this new database. And uh, some of our colleagues at WMF had had a long relationship working with Jordan on uh, the evolution of its own uh, national heritage management system. And so, in fact, Jordan became, uh, and their uh, Mega Jordan database became the first real trial of this system. And what we discovered was that uh, although uh, the Iraqis had to struggle with the idea of implementing something as sophisticated uh, as this tool turned out to be, uh, there was a, a, a real demand around the world for an update of a technological platform for which uh, heritage institutions could maintain inventories. The irony is that virtually every uh, country that has uh, a heritage management system, which is virtually every country, uh, has a system that's based on the idea of inventory. But the uh, record keeping is generally out of date, inaccessible, and under-resourced in terms of the personnel who are devoted to it. And so uh, this situation uh, th where there was no platform that anyone could acquire and no uh, data system that anyone could buy that would really serve as an adequate tool was the um, point of foundation for uh, arches. The investment for World Monuments Fund was a little bit um, unusual in that uh, so much of our work does uh, tend to be on the ground. And we ultimately, in Iraq, moved toward a site-specific program at Babylon. But we can cite the fact uh, that through our World Monuments Watch, which is our global advocacy program, uh, we encounter many, many sites uh, that are at risk that may or may not survive in their present form. And that uh, to have a resource that would help to record those sites and continue to, uh, to gather information about them would be an extraordinarily powerful tool. 
And so perhaps one day even World Monuments Fund will be a user of its own system. But uh, we do see much wider applications. Uh, first of all, it's, a, it's an essential tool in planning. And I think we'll be hearing, uh, I know we'll be hearing a little bit later today from people from the city of Los Angeles who have uh, been one of the first implementers of the ARCHES system. And this is uh, the goal that the uh, state of Jordan has had in uh, inventorying their archaeological sites in order to prevent uh, new development from uh, impacting those sites. And uh, that was really the point of departure also when we began working on the database system for Iraq. Ironically, I guess, again, we thought that the biggest challenge was going to be development and redevelopment of the country. Uh, whereas uh, what they needed, in fact, was a much more fundamental resource. But that planning management capability is a very powerful um, potential for the system. Um, secondly, inventories of this nature, if they are openly accessible, can help members of the public learn about the importance of places in their own communities, and sometimes things that are hiding in plain sight. And so we look forward to the application uh, of the system in a case like uh, Los Angeles where it could become a great public education tool. And then finally, inventories prove their value in times of crisis, when there's a need to document and access information about things that have been destroyed and to the extent possible put together the information of what those resources were before and uh, what they and what kind of condition they're in today. And we'll be hearing from another organization, the American School for Oriental Studies, uh, about a program that they're conducting in Syria and Iraq uh, in order to monitor the condition of heritage sites. Uh, and those are the general benefits that I see of, um, of, of this uh, development. Uh, there's been an overwhelming response from institutions around the world that are interested in using it. Unfortunately, many of those institutions don't really have the staff resources to deploy. And so little by little, uh, we're seeing this move into the public domain, and we hope that it will become the standard. We know it can be the standard for the field in the years to come. I'm now going to uh, invite my colleague, Tim Whalen, the uh, director of the Getty Conservation Institute, to make uh, some more remarks about how the Getty became involved in this and their stewardship of the program. Good morning. Thanks very much, Bonnie. It's great to be here with all of you. I'm Tim Whalen, the director of the Getty Conservation Institute in Los Angeles, and my colleagues and I are delighted to be here with our partners, the World Monuments Fund. Uh, for many years now, the World Monuments Fund has been one of our most important and most valuable partners. The project we are speaking about this morning was only possible because of this joint effort and partnership and I want to thank Bonnie and her colleagues for all they've invested intellectually and financially into this multi-year effort. The Getty Conservation Institute works around the world to advance conservation practice. So our work is different than the WMFs, but it's wholly complementary. In all of our endeavors, we work to create and share knowledge that will benefit and serve professionals that care for the cultural heritage, both movable cultural heritage and immovable cultural heritage. So through scientific research, capacity building, field work, publications, and the creation of new tools, we deliver our mission. The development of ARCHES in partnership with the WMF is yet another example of this. As Bonnie said, this project, ARCHES, has its origins in the early days of the war in Iraq. Think back to April of 2003 when all of us here uh, read in the New York Times one April morning that the Baghdad Museum had been sacked. And it was around that same time that details of the mass looting in Iraq were being uh, made known in the press. In March 2004 in Amman, the WMF and the Getty signed an agreement with the Iraq State Board of Antiquities and Heritage. And over the coming three years, we were able to bring together more than 30 archeologists from across Iraq to meet colleagues from the Middle East, from Europe, and from North America and to share advancements in the field of cultural heritage conservation from which they've been cut off for more than a decade. As Bonnie mentioned, MEGA, the Middle East Geodatabase for Antiquities, was created as part of this larger initiative. 
Together with Farallon Geographics in San Francisco, the World Monuments Fund and the GCI created a geospatial and web-based software platform, bilingual in Arabic and English, to deploy by the Iraq State Board for Antiquities and ultimately Jordan as well, to inventory and manage the archeological uh, records in those countries. But from MEGA, we learned a great deal about such a system's strengths and its weaknesses, and also about the challenges of implementing those systems in far-flung places. But nonetheless, we were once again reminded of the huge importance that inventories play and the fact that they are the first line of defense and the preservation of cultural heritage, whether that's in New York City or whether that's in uh, lands controlled by ISIL at the moment. While MEGA served and continues to serve an important purpose, it was limited in its abilities beyond the archeological heritage, and thus the notion of ARCH was, was born. ARCHES is a new tool that allows for the collection and management of data of the full spectrum of immovable cultural places, including archeology, span architecture, buildings, sites, monuments, districts, and landscapes. ARCHES provides a sophisticated but back-to-the-basics state-of-the-art tool for organizations and individuals to house and manage their inventories of historic resources. ARCHES incorporates widely adopted international standards for heritage inventories and offers a modern platform that can be customized to meet particular heritage, geographic, and political requirements. ARCHES is open source, so it can be freely downloaded by anyone at no cost. The takeaway here is that, bu that budget-strapped organizations do not have to pay an annual licensing fee to utilize ARCHES because it resides freely within the public realm. ARCHES incorporates internationally adopted standards for heritage inventories, semantic modeling, and information technology, leading to better practices in the creation and management of heritage data and the facilitation of data exchange and longevity in spite of advances in technology. In other words, it keeps data safe. ARCHES uses the CDOC conceptual reference model, an international standard for the exchange of information between cultural heritage institutions. And finally, ARCHES is web-based for the widest possible access. So data that resides within ARCHES can be shared as broadly or as narrowly as its implementer or administrator sees fit. Now ARCHES has already been adopted by a number of organizations around the world, but this morning you'll hear and learn about two very different examples of how ARCHES has been implemented to the benefit of the cultural heritage. The first example of the deployment of ARCHES this morning is something called Historic Places LA which is now the repository for all of Los Angeles's historic place data. Now, uh, I, uh, I think this fact may puzzle our New York colleagues that that even exists. <laughs> Nonetheless, <laughs> HPLA is the largest and most comprehensive implementation of ARCHES to date. And please keep in mind that this very pleasant website you're about to see is really a wolf in sheep's clothing. This is a robust and powerful tool and when it was implemented in Los Angeles, the, pre the press kept talking about what a nice website it was. And indeed, it presents as a nice website, but what's important is the uh, tools and the ability to manipulate it that resides behind what you'll be seeing here. And that's where uh, uh, administrators, agencies, projects have a new tool that uh, they haven't had before.